Christ is risen. risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen. The grave could not hold him. Ah, the grave. Is there anything so confining or dark, dark as a sealed grave? I know we're all here on this second Sunday of Easter to focus on an open and empty grave. Yet, it will serve our faith well if we don't rush past the closed grave too quickly. We tend to rush from it is finished to he is risen. There is, however, a grave in between. A grave that deserves our attention. It must be important to consider because the Apostles' Creed, which is brief by design, a mere total of 110 words, includes mention of the grave. It says, was crucified, dead, and buried. If so many key moments in the life of Jesus are left out of the creed, why state the obvious? Stating that Jesus was crucified and died isn't being buried, a little self-evident. His burial in the grave is included because it is central to the gospel. Listen to Paul in his own words. Now I make known to you the gospel which I preached to you, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day. For Paul, what was of first importance in the gospel was that Christ died. He was buried, and he was raised from the grave. It is best not to rush past the burial. The grave is proof that our Savior died. The burial leads no doubt that Jesus was dead. The tomb where they laid him shows the cost of our salvation. The wages of sin is death, says Romans. Jesus himself gave importance to his own burial. When a woman had poured expensive ointment on him days before his death, the disciples were upset with what they saw as an extravagant waste. Jesus said, in pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. When we die and are buried, we are cut off from the land of the living. Who will remember any of us 70 or 80 years from now? It's not a very pleasant thought, is it? This is the reason his burial is important to us. Easter resurrection fulfills the promise of God for all of us. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave, says Psalm 16. Easter is our loud amen to this promise. The burial of Jesus is such a sweet part of the gospel, for it reminds us that we are not alone in the grave. As a way of illustrating this, I am reminded of a story from the old Alfred Hitchcock Presents TV show. It was about a woman in prison who became good friends with the prison caretaker. When a prisoner died, he would ring the bell, get the body, put it in a casket, and nail it shut. Then, placing the casket on a wagon, he would take it to the graveyard outside the prison walls and bury the corpse. Now, knowing this routine, the woman devised an escape plan and shared it with the caretaker. The next time that the bell rings, she said, I'll leave my cell and sneak into the coffin with the dead body, nail the lid shut, and take the coffin outside the prison with me in it. Bury the coffin, she continued. And because there will be enough air for me to breathe for quite some time, you can come back to the graveyard that night, dig up the coffin, and set me free. The caretaker agreed to the plan. 
One day, this woman heard the, heard the ringing of the death bell. She arose, walked down the hallway, found the coffin containing the dead body, and climbed on in. Soon she heard the pounding of hammer and nails. The coffin was lifted onto the wagon and taken outside to the graveyard. After the dirt was poured on the coffin, she began to giggle out loud. I'm free, I'm free. Feeling curious, she lit a match to identify the prisoner that was beside her. And in the glimmer of light, she discovered that she was laying next to the dead caretaker. <laughs> now in classic Alfred Hitchcock fashion, this final scene fades as we hear the woman screaming, 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 then silence. It pays to know ahead of time who you might be buried alongside in the grave. Who will be in the grave with you? This thought is expressed in a story from the 13th chapter of 2 Kings, one that usually does not get much coverage in the Sunday school curriculum for small children. A man dies. He has no name uh, stated. But on the way to his burial, the funeral procession is interrupted by a band of raiders. Now the pallbearers, in order to escape them, threw his body into a nearby tomb. But it was not any old uh, musty tomb, but it was the tomb of the great prophet Elisha. If you're going to dump a body in a grave, then Elisha's grave is the one you want. Elisha was the one who parted the water of the Jordan River. Elisha is the one who resurrected the son of a widow. In his lifetime, he heals Naaman of his leprosy. He was quite a guy in his life. But his most awesome work happened in his death. It says in 2 Kings, So they threw the man's body into Elisha's tomb. When the body touched Elisha's bones, the man came to life and stood up on his feet. The casual reader might pause and think, well, that's a little strange of a story and just kind of move on. But there is within this account a sweet foretelling of a greater prophet who would lay in the grave. Let's all of us strike a match, the match of the gospel and see who we are buried with. Of this prophet, we hear these words. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him, through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead, Colossians. How can this be true? How are we buried with him? Consider one more word of God. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Romans. In your baptism, you have been buried and raised in Christ. The grave that could not hold on to the body of Jesus cannot and will not hold on to anyone who is in Christ. Do you remember what John the Baptist said on the day that Christ came to him on the banks of the Jordan River? He said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the world, the, takes away the sin of the world. Where does this Lamb God, Lamb of God, take our sin? Well, he takes them to the grave. There's an old gospel song entitled Glorious Day, whose refrain expressed this truth. It says, living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day, he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. Oemini once said, anyone can be sentimental about the 
nativity, any fool can feel like a Christian at Christmas time, but Easter is the main event. If you don't believe in the resurrection, you're not a believer. Who is in the grave with you? Crucified, died, buried, rose. All of these are the gospel. And it is this good news for our most fundamental fear in life, the fear of death. The grave of Jesus has sanctified death and the grave for all believers. Now we know that we are not alone in the grave. We were buried with him and we are raised up in him. When the grave lost its grip on Jesus, it also lost its grip on your grave as well. The grave that once cut us off from the land of the living is now the door of entry through the torn veil of his flesh. Where the resurrected Christ has gone before us to the other side. Knowing who is in the grave with us, we are able to say, O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is a law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray with me. O oh, Jesus, standing for, before your open grave, teach me to live, that I may dread the grave as little as my bed. Teach me to die so that I may rise glorious at the judgment day. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.